Hello, everyone. This is Terry Lynn. Welcome to the University of Eucadia information call tonight, Thursday night. Uh, let's see, January 13th. We should have Frank on board. Frank, are you here? Well, we're waiting for Frank to arrive from Australia. Can you guys hear me okay? Great. Thank you for the feedback. I see you there in the chat room. Welcome, everyone. Let's see if we get Frank here in the next minute or so. He should be joining us. Someone, uh, let's see, that I just unmuted. Um, You should be not muted. Uh, You're coming up as a non-member. Who is that that I just unmuted? All right. Uh, Sorry about that. Frank, are you here? I just need to get on tonight. Um, Oh, there you are. Hi, good. Welcome, Frank. I've uh, welcomed everyone to the call tonight, and we're looking forward to uh, hearing from you. Any new updates and things that are going on or that you're working on? Uh, Today being the 13th of January over here, I believe you're on the 14th already. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, it is. (laughs) Very good. Well, welcome. And welcome, everyone. And, Frank, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, and you'll do an introduction and take it away. Oh, great. Look, thank you, Terry. And thank you, everyone, who have come on to the call tonight. Uh, I extend my, my, also, my thoughts out to uh, Brian, who is speaking with Angela tonight at the same time, uh, which is wonderful. And I've spoken with Angela in the past and and apologised that we do... Uh, appear to have a clash in times. The problem being, of course, the, where I'm in the world and being able to get on and speaking with you, this is really the only time that I can afford on a regular basis. So, uh, again, my thoughts and welcome out to Angela and out to Brian, who's speaking there tonight. There's a lot of things that have been happening, and, and in fact, um, if you've seen the conversations that have been going on through Skype and the emails that I've been receiving from you all, and thank you very much. There are a lot of things happening, so I want to get through a number of those tonight. And given there is a number of things happening, I'm going to ask if we can extend the first part of this call to a little bit longer than just one hour, probably one hour and ten minutes. But then also to extend out the Q&A to about an hour and ten minutes as well. And uh, I'm making sure that I can actually uh, see the uh, conversations going through so I can get a a gauge on the kind of chat that people are talking about uh, through TalkShoe and just ask you if you can please um, um, log your questions and also let Terry know if you want to ask a question. So tonight there's, as I say, given the number of things that have been happening, uh, I want to cover some of the um, new research and the new functions and the new parts of the remedy that have all become available. But I also think it's extremely important, given the amount of information and the amount of change and and questions, that we do a bit of a recap as well in terms of some of the key areas that we're doing. So with that in mind, I I want to start with, and I know it sounds fairly high level, but I want to start with this principle of the law. What is it we are doing with canon law, with Eucadia, with the charters, with the covenants, with the codes of law. What do we mean by the law? And, and what is our important role? What is your important role, more, more particularly, in regards to the law? I want to address this issue in terms of honesty and transparency and the change that we are part of, that all of you are part of, and all that hopefully we'll hear this call part of in terms of no more life. I also want to address short and briefly about this issue of taking responsibility and competence and what we mean by this. I also want to cover briefly 
some excellent research that um, Mary has put on, Mary Croft, uh, continuing this theme that we're dealing with insanity and insanity being a mental illness and not evil and really stripping away any pretensions or any of the false PR that the powers that be want us to believe in them being evil and therefore gaining a reflexive action from us of fear as opposed to seeing them for what they are, men and women in desperate need of medical attention. I want to cover common law and the important principles of honour and what is underpinning what we're doing with ecclesiastical deeds, what we're doing with court remedy and the distinction between that and the private laws being case law of the bar. I want to talk to you about the updates we're doing to the registers and being able to access the lifeborne record automatically and how this will become a regular feature that we will be applying across all the websites uh, to streamline and make it easier for you. I want to talk about some of the, the help with court matters and some of the update information that's there and some of the issues that people are facing with court matters. Uh, I want to talk also about the deeds of trust and the conveyance, the crucial conveyance of Eucadia to you all and all those that have never heard of us yet and all those that may hear the call later and that process. I want to end really in addressing those that may be listening to our call, almost certainly listen to our call, those that are in the law enforcement, in the intelligence communities, those that um, are tasked with um, doing their job, following orders, and really this issue that is the theme of this year, which is making a decision whether to follow bandits and pirates who pretend to be the law and are nothing more than bandits and pirates and thieves and liars and people with terrible mental illness or making a decision to actually be what you claim to be and actually stand up and protect the law rather than injure the law. So I want to talk about that at the end. So there are a few things there. Uh, the law, honesty, taking responsibility, Insanity versus mental illness, uh, common law, the updates to the registers, help with court matters, um, deeds of trust and conveyance, and making a decision. <clears throat> so with that, let's get started with the first one. What is it that Eucadia is about? What is it that One Heaven is about? In essence, because... I know a lot of you under, understand this and get this, but a lot of people still struggle with it. And there is, of course, a lot of disinformation around as well. What Eucadia and One Heaven and the covenants and the charters and the tens of thousands of pages of work that has been built up over 25 years is all about can be summarized in one statement. Restoring the law. Restoring the law. And when you think about it, we live in a world where uh, there are, in America, for example, they believe something around 60 million, 60 million laws on the books at present, if you count regulations, state statutes, and federal law. 60 million compared to the 12 tablets of law that sat in the Roman Forum as a foundation of Roman law for a thousand years, or compared to the few hundred laws of the Code of Hammurabi, which we see largely um, complete in our hands, or the laws of Akhenaten, or the 613 commandments in the uh, Old Testament, so the basis of law appears to have been for hundreds, if not thousands of years, certainly thousands of years. Very simple, very clear, unmistakable. The law had nothing to do with making a profit. It certainly had nothing to do with corrupting the process by the people in the court making money from that. The law stood as something equal to all of us. No one was above the law. No one was above the law. 
The law was for all of us. The law was the foundation of civilization. The law was the thing that protected civilization. And it was certainly not the thing to be sold to a private guild, to be held by some private association, to be controlled by some private association. There were no laws of heresy in terms of practicing law. There was no practice of law. Law was used. Law was dealt with. Law was issued. Law was honoured. And there was a symbiosis between the law, the land, and our belief in the divine. That is not the law of the modern world today. Far from it. And I know many of you would know this. The ones that would know it are probably the ones from law enforcement. The ones that are professionally hired and trained as quote-unquote law enforcement officials and intelligence officials. Who instead have been image trained. <clears throat> trained to be devoid of any personal feeling, to be devoid of thinking, to be devoid of being rational, to be morons, idiots, when it comes to the law, even though they are claimed to be law enforcement. Well, before the arrival of the bar guilds of Florence and Venice and later London, whose sole purpose was to commercialize and corrupt the law, the law that we see in the Bible and the Quran and texts in Hammurabi. Before their arrival in the 16th century and their gradual usurpation and takeover of the law, the law was ours and law enforcement was there to protect the law. And the law didn't involve commercial transactions and bonds and uh, trusts. It was the basis of our society. And since then, it has been corrupted. It has been corrupted to the root so that we can't rely on the canon law of the Roman cult to tell us anything of the foundation of law because none of it, except for a fraction of it, has any resemblance to the foundation of law. And we struggle because of the corruptions of sacred texts to see the full picture of the law that was held and sustained society for millennia. And we can't rely on the codes because the codes have been now designed for special interests so that groups, whether they be pharmaceutical companies or corporations or real estate, building construction, you know, parasites and our friends, the Venetians and the Genoese that have taken this and used this to make their own and feather their own nests that have thoroughly and utterly destroyed the function of our law and education and health so that our societies are dying from the inside. Our infrastructure is crumbling. Our babies are being poisoned because of the insanity of these codes of law, these 60 million laws that with 60 million are choking us to death and killing us bit by bit, lawfully, legally. The purpose of Eucadia is to restore the law. It has nothing to do with, and in no way can anyone genuinely say that it's here to usurp any law of the divine. And if anyone does believe in the divine and does believe in divine law, then they cannot possibly say that Eucadia and One Heaven is against the law of the divine. The only way they can say that is if they come from a premise of ignorance and refuse to read and refuse to comprehend and refuse to see what surely they can see with their own eyes is that it is given to us to take responsibility if we read and believe what has been written is true. To be competent and to no longer act as slaves or the sons who buried their talents in the ground before the father and said, I'm sorry I was waiting for you to tell me what to do. No, we are given talents for a reason, to use them, 
not to hide them, not to come up with excuses.